Hey guys, it's Zach. If you have a Tesla Powerwall system or you're considering one, here are six hidden features that most people don't even know exist. Now, most of these are just cool to have, but they can definitely boost that Powerwall experience to another level. If you are brand new to the Tesla app, you should also check out my other videos on the software. Those can be found in the description below. So starting off the video with an easy one, the Tesla widget. Now, this might be old news to some, but I was shocked to find that there are still a lot of Powerwall users that I talk with who didn't even know a widget for their Tesla app existed. Bad news to Android users though, this is currently only available on Apple, but that could change in the near future. This feature is available on iPhone, iPad, and Mac. What it'll show you is the real-time Powerwall state of charge, as well as other information like real-time home power, real-time solar power, energy usage and solar generation for the day, self-powered percentage for the month, and solar offset for the month. I opt for my widget to show me the generation and usage for the day, and it's nice to see a quick progress report on how everything's performing, what's my Powerwall state of charge, and if anything looks off on either metric. I still do check my app quite a bit, but for those of you that may only check on your system a couple times a month, this widget could serve as a nice reminder to check in and see what's going on with your system. I really like having it on my MacBook as well, so that way I'm able to get all of my daily energy stats at a quick glance. And if you are a Powerwall owner, you should definitely subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate appreciate that and I'll make sure to pump out a lot more videos just like this that hopefully bring you some value. Now the second feature isn't actually in the Tesla app but it's in a third party app from NetZero and if you've watched my videos before you've likely heard me mention this app. If you are new here I highly recommend downloading this NetZero app and checking it out. It will allow you to get a lot more from your Powerwall than the stock Tesla app alone. I put the download link for NetZero in the description below if you want to check it out. I have zero incentive whatsoever to advertise this software. I just really really like it. Within the Net Zero app, you can set up notifications for when specific things occur with your Powerwall system. Much like the widget feature, this is really easy to set up. These notifications will both ping you directly on your device, just like any app would, but also send you an email. I'm going to quickly highlight two of the easy ones that I use to make my Powerwall experience a little bit better, but there are a whole bunch of options to pick from. First, I have an automation set to have the Net Zero app ping me when my Powerwall reaches 100% state of charge, as well as when I reach my back up reserve, which is 15% as of now. In the app, you'd go to automations, hit the plus at the top right, then toggle the power wall option, select charge to 100%, and then scroll to the bottom and select just send notification, and you're done. Do the same thing again, and then just select the discharge down to option and the percent of your backup reserve. You should now see both of these automations saved under schedule. This is really helpful for me so I can get a good idea of when my power walls are typically charged up and discharged down throughout the day as the year goes on. It's also nice because if I hit 100% in the middle of the day and I'm home, this reminds me it's a good time to run other electrical loads or even pre-cool my home to take advantage of my excess solar generation. The same can be true if you see that notification letting you know that you've hit your backup reserve. This might serve as a nice reminder to cut back on your energy consumption. NetZero has a bunch of automations available and I will do a video on my favorite automations here in the near future, so be on the lookout for that. Hopefully these free videos that I upload are all you need, but if you do need any assistance setting up your Tesla app, your system automations, or just learning what everything means, I do offer a paid support call that is available if that's something that you would find helpful. I have that linked in the description below. Now for number three, this one is for those of you Powerwall owners that have an electric vehicle or maybe have plans to get an EV in the future. It may seem like it would only make sense for you to get a Tesla wall charger if you're gonna get a Tesla vehicle. But if you have a Powerwall system, you should consider getting their universal wall connector no matter what EV you get and here's why. First, the universal wall connector works with both NACS or J1772 charging ports, so it will adapt with you as your EV choices might change. But secondly, it'll integrate nicely in your Tesla app right there on your homepage. Honestly, I didn't even know about this until about a year after getting my Tesla wall connector installed. So let's go ahead and pull up my app. So I have the standard solar, power wall, home, and grid metrics on the power flow, but if you add a Tesla wall connector to your site, it will add a garage to the home and show your vehicle's power flow when it's plugged in. Additionally, if you have two wall connectors, it's gonna show two garages on your home. That's how I have it set up, and it's a little cramped with two wall connectors, but it's nice having all of that information available. Right now in the energy section, the energy stats for vehicle will only show for Tesla vehicles, but it's expected to work in the future for all vehicles charged by your wall connector, Tesla or otherwise. This would be a really nice addition 
addition for Tesla, so if you have a Ford Lightning, for example, you can see all of the energy stats directly here on your Powerwall system. If you do need help pairing your wall connector to your Tesla site on the app, check the description below for instructions. Moving into number four, we will address a popular question that gets asked on any solar setup, and that's how can I be sure my solar is working at its full potential? And Net Zero has a solar tracking feature that can give you that peace of mind that you might be looking for, that your solar is producing as expected, or hopefully even better. It may also give you an early indicator that something isn't working as it should. And you can see for me on my app, similar to the Tesla app, you have your solar generation graph directly here in Net Zero, and you can view that for any date range that you'd like, but what's unique here is if you look close, you can see these small red dots on the chart as well, and this represents my system's expected generation directly from PV watts. I recommend using this feature to see your system's performance over a longer date range, such as month, year, or lifetime. Don't worry about the small performance dips over a single day, that's totally normal. For my system year to date, I'm sitting at about 7% more system generation than expected based on my system size, panel direction, shading, and so on. This is helpful to see and know that everything's checking out. How you set this up is under your settings in net zero. First, you go to account and make sure that you have your location set, so city and state. Then back out and go into solar estimates and set up your array details. You're gonna wanna add your array, your system size, panel orientation, DC to AC sizing, and losses. My system is a 10 kilowatt DC with 25 panels, 400 watts each. It's on a roof with around a 22 degree pitch. Orientation is southwest at 210 degrees. And my inverter is a 7.6 kilowatt AC. So I'm getting around a 1.31 DC to AC ratio. This app does do a good job of explaining everything here for you. But for most of you with a Powerwall 3 system, your inverter size is 11.5 kilowatts AC. If you do have multiple Powerwall 3s, it would be 11. 7.5 times the number of units. If you have multiple roof section used or arrays, you would need to do this for each one. Once completed, go ahead and hit add and then done, and you should see these red dots on your solar generation graphs. If it's not showing up for any reason, go ahead and close and then reopen the app. If it looks way off, you likely messed something up, leave a comment below and we can figure it out together. Now you can track your solar generation and make sure it's stacking up to what PV Watts thinks your system should be doing. And if this video is adding any value so far, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. Now for number five, let's talk about a new feature in Stormwatch. Now, you may already know about Stormwatch, but for those of you who don't, it's a feature within the Tesla app that will activate when a weather warning has been issued to your area. Once it's activated, it'll top off your power wall, fill it to 100% using both solar and grid power, and then keep it at 100% just in case an outage does occur. The only downside of this was you couldn't manually trigger Stormwatch until now. They recently added a feature where you can actually schedule a Stormwatch event. You just go into Settings, Stormwatch, and then schedule an event from one to 72 hours. And what this is gonna do is fill up your power walls to 100% and utilize grid power while available. This could be used at any time, whether you're concerned with a power outage or you just wanna to top off your battery before peak hours begin. This is currently the only way to trigger grid charging. You will also need to make sure that you have grid charging turned on in your settings. If you're looking at this as a way to top off your batteries every single day, you can do it this way, but Net Zero has an automation for this that I will show you in a future video that'll be much easier to do. My only disclaimer here is it will override your time-based control. So if you have those time of use rates, be very careful that this isn't overlapping any of your on-peak hours, unless you just don't care about that and you wanna fill up your battery quickly. Last, with number six, this is another new feature within the Tesla app when you go off-grid. When your Powerwall system goes off-grid, you will get a notification sent to your phone or you can actually trigger it manually through that go off grid feature on the homepage. Now, anytime you're off grid, you're gonna see a projection of how many backup hours remain based on your current energy consumption. This part isn't anything new, but Tesla recently added a power meter to ensure that you're never overloading your power wall. This is important because if you overload your power wall past its continuous output limit, it will shut down the system and during a power outage, that could really be a problem. So stay away from the yellow and the red zones on this power meter and it even gives you some best practices during an outage and that could be summed up in two words reduce consumption. So if you start stacking too many loads during an outage, you will see that power meter start to increase. Keep in mind too, when you're using that go off grid feature on the app, if you have partial home backup like me, 
everything in your home will still operate, but the power wall will only supply power to your backed up loads while the grid will power your non backed up loads. Additionally, the app will only calculate energy drawn from your backed up loads towards its power meter and its energy estimates, which is really nice because it gives you a more accurate simulation. If you do have every single load in your home backed up, then this caveat doesn't apply to you. If you do want to trigger a true power outage, you would need to flip your main breaker since go off grid is more of a virtual simulation. If you are looking for more tips and tricks on the Tesla app, check out this video here on the screen where I break down some of the most important settings that you need to know for your Powerwall system. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will talk to you guys next time.